the first GCQA, non-school employment by staff members. This policy was specifically referenced in a footnote to the FMLA policy, which is up for second reading, where um, the VSBA advised that if under the Family Medical Leave Act policy, the school board was going to require individuals on FMLA not to have non-school employment, the board would need to have a um, similar um, policy uh, relating to non-school employment by staff members. We currently do have a policy 8.58 um, that looks a little bit different in structure to our to the model policy GCQA, um, but in um, insofar as it allows employees to engage in non-school employment as long as it doesn't detract or interfere with their employment at Falls Church City School Board, it's consistent with previous policy 8.58. Um, which is another one that's pretty outdated. It was last adopted or last revised in 2011. Um, it also says that if a um, employee is on leave from the school board um, employment, whether in paid or unpaid status, they have to receive prior written authorization from the Director of Human Resources. Um, and it makes clear that the school board doesn't endorse, support, or assume liability for any activity conducted by a school board employee outside the scope of their employment. Any questions on GCQA, non-school employment by staff members? All right, hearing none. Um, policy GCBD, staff leaves and absences. Um, Amy Hall um, and I have spent hours going through our leave policies. We have about 13 regulations related to leave, and um, many of those we're going to be able to wrap up um, and, and continue as regulations but not have as many details and I think it's going to make it much more clear for staff on what types of leave we have, particularly making sure that the regulations will align with the current leaves that our 12-month employees and our 10-month employees have. Um, so this GCBD, staff leaves and absences, um, is very straightforward. Um, two sentences talking about the um, Leaves and absences are subject to school division policy and regulations and that it's up to the superintendent to establish the necessary regulations. In that regard, it's similar to policy 8.78, .8, um, but we don't think that it's necessary to include what those specific regulations are within this policy, which is what 8.78 .8 does now. Any questions on policy GCBD? Hearing none, the final personnel policy for tonight is GCBEA, leave without pay. Um, it is worth pointing out that this policy only applies to employees in their first year of employment. This covers the gap year when FMLA would not um, be permitted under federal law because an individual has not been employed for 12 months. So um, the standard is somebody who otherwise would be eligible for FMLA because they work the 12, 50 hours a year but they have not been employed for 12 months can um, apply for leave without pay. Um, the approval must be obtained prior to the leave being taken. Um, the rights under this policy, GCBEA, do expire after the employee's first year. And it does make clear, um, starting at line 27, that employees who are un on unpaid leave under this policy um, cannot be employed in another capacity unless they receive advanced written approval of the superintendent. Um, it's the amount of leave here um, for a debilitating or life-threatening illness is um, up to 30 days. That's not mandated by state statute or code, but that was what the VSBA recommended. And Dr. Noonan and I thought that was reasonable given this would be a first-year employee who is experiencing their own life-threatening illness or injury or, or um, debilitating injury. Um, I also do want to point out that we are this, this policy does nothing to... Um, impact um, other leaves that we have, um, other um, available through our regulations right now. Um, and the corresponding policy for this, or what this policy would be replacing, is actually a current regulation 8.78.14, um, leave without pay, which going through that, there's many um, elements of leave without pay that right now make um, Miss Hall's life more difficult. There's certain um, meetings that have to be had if employees ha take leave without pay that before it's approved in advance and then follow up meetings with supervisors that need to take place. So we think by moving to this policy it makes it clear that employees can't have leave without pay without it being approved in advance. 
So we do think that that's going to help, um, and that's something that we're going to make sure that we message to staff and staff is aware of in advance. Um, so that would be a change in in practice, um, but we do think that it's something that we can message out appropriately and make sure that everybody understands and can follow. Questions on GCBEA, leave without pay? Hearing none. The last two, oh, <laughs> too speedy. So, so just, so this is only for the employee's condition, right? It's not a family member's condition? That's right. Um, as it reads, it's only granted to employees of the school who have a debil debilitating or life-threatening illness or injury and are not eligible for FMLA. It doesn't say anything about caring for a family member who would have a life-threatening illness or injury. Yeah, because I thought FMLA is for not you. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess kind of... FMLA could be for you for or you for someone well. else. Okay. This policy okay. is limited to the employee's debilitating or life-threatening illness or injury. Okay, thank yeah. you. Sure. Any other questions? So just to clarify that this is only for that first gap year. Um, just out of curiosity, do we have a separate policy for those individuals who've already exhausted their FMLA and would need to leave without pay for some reason? Or how, I guess I'm just curious if there's another policy and that would cover that situation. Because I could see like a situation where someone might be caring for like a parent for the 12 weeks of the FMLA and burn through that and then they're not eligible for another year, mm -hmm. but then have their own life threatening. Mm -hmm. Right now we have a leave of absence under our current regulations and I don't anticipate that that would be um, changed much, but I think we're going to be looking at what it's called and what it's limited to. And I think one of the most important pieces that I'm working on with Ms. Hall is making sure that we have advance notice of those leaves so that when these situations are coming up, we know in advance that this is anticipated or there's a concern um, that has been brought to our attention by employees, recognizing that there can be extenuating circumstances, but um, hoping that it can be arranged in, in much time in advance to get substitutes online and making sure that folks know what's going on and there can be support provided for the staff member as well. Anything else on GCBEA? Okay, the last two policies for first reading are um, policies that were recently adopted or fairly recently adopted by the board and part of the VSBA policy services is they review all policies every five years and when there are changes in the law. So. I do anticipate that at future board meetings when we're bringing policies that have been revised by the VSBA and they're not substantive changes that I would recommend um, waiving first reading and going straight to second reading and adoption. Um, these two policies, however, do have some substantive changes that I thought were worth bringing up and noting. Um, the first is FEG, construction, um, construction Planning. This was last adopted by the board in June of last year. So. A, a year and a day ago um, and you can see I, I put in red that the structure was changed to the policy to, to make it bullet format and to add that um, in construction planning um, the plans have been reviewed by an individual or entity with professional expertise in building security and crime prevention through building design that's not anything different from what we've been doing but now it is a requirement under um, the Virginia code so we wanted to um, go ahead and add it in here. It also requires that the, uh, the superintendent's approval, architects and engineer statements, and all of the comments of reviewers are submitted to the superintendent of public instruction. So that's an additional change that we'll make sure that after this policy is adopted by the board, we share with, with Sevi and with Daisy Bergman and others who are assisting us in the construction planning. Any questions on FEG? So, so the red bullet is also required by code? The by red Virginia bullet? Code? Yes. Okay. There were revisions to 22.1140 in the most recent um, legislative okay. session. All right, thanks. I, I think one of the things that um, Ms. Benson suggested about some of these, uh, you know, there are going to be updates on these all the time. And so one thing you, as, as was mentioned, you may want to consider waiving um, first reading, move right to second reading, unless there's some reason not to. But um, just to, wanted to reiterate that. 
And the last policy is GA personnel policies goals. Um, this was initially adopted by the board in April of 2017, so it's two years ago. Um, the initial policy was just that first sentence talking about the goal of the employment policies and practices of Falls Church City School Board. Now lines 8 through 30 have been added um, to specifically clarify that the school board really can't pass the trash to another school board if they are aware of, um, the, if they know or have probable cause to believe that the employee contractor or agent engaged in sexual misconduct regarding a minor in violation of the law. There are specific carve-outs to that if an individual has, um, for example, the matter's been officially closed by the prosecutor or police, um, the employee who was otherwise charged has been exonerated, um, or the investigation remains open within four years of the date the information was reported to law enforcement. I um, can assure you that this is something we're already doing, but due to changes in um, both the United States Code and in the Virginia Code as seen in the legal references at the bottom of the page is a required part of the policies and I think is is what we should be doing. Um, it is what we're, we are doing and I think the, the policy reflecting that is important. And, and as Dr. Noonan said, while this is a major substantive change in addition of 30 some odd lines to a policy, I don't think it, it changes anything we do and I think it would be fine if the board wanted to weigh first reading of both FEG and GA and go straight to second reading and adoption. Um, I don't see any reason not to do that at this point unless you had major questions or concerns with the language in either of these policies. I just have one suggestion in line nine mm -hmm. that, that it be, I would say a current or former. Hmm. No employee Because if somebody leaves agent. and you know that, you'd still <coughs> want policy to extend those mm -hmm. steps. Someone could argue that if they've left, they're not a school board employee without that additional clarification. Mm -hmm. Line eight. Line nine, I believe. So it would then read current or former, no employee, contractor, or agent of the Falls Church City School Board may assist a current or former school board employee, contractor, agent in obtaining a new job. Is that what you're saying? I think that would be fine um, because we wouldn't have control over they, whether they were a current or former employee, but we would have control over our current employees, contractors, and agents. So it would be us directing those over whom we do exercise control by virtue of our employment that they can't talk about or, or give references or assist someone who's currently with us or someone who has left. I think that's, that's a fine addition if you all agree. Okay. So on that one, if it is going, um, waiving first reading, going to second reading and adoption, it would just be um, moved for adoption as amended. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I have a I have a different question on lines. Um, well, I guess it's on eleven and fourteen, mm -hmm. um, and I know it's in the code because I looked at that, and I know it's in USC seventy nine twenty six. Mm -hmm. I looked at that. Um, probable cause is kind of a legal imposition. Do we have people? Uh, are our employees trained to know whether they have probable cause to make a determination like that? Are you asking me if the legislature got it right by including that language? Or I'm wondering if that's uh, if having that in there is is something that there's um, absolutely zero flexibility about, or if we have some definition that can explain it. I'm I'm just thinking about somebody saying, you know, I don't know. If, if I could pile on. I yes, mean, to me, absolutely. To me, probable cause, and I was thinking that same thing. That, that probable cause is basically a. A, a charging or you know a warrant you issue a warrant if there's probable cause I, I don't I, I'm not sure what probable cause means for a school division right I, I think the challenge is that's the exact language from 20 USC 7926 let me look at the Virginia code too it's the same I'm looking at it. it is um, well just because it's just because it's code doesn't mean that we can't get some definition around it. So I wonder right. if perhaps we don't waive first reading on this and we talk mm -hmm. to Elizabeth Ewing and see if she can give some 